Hello and welcome to the Monday, January 13th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, big event today and probably taking most of this podcast, if not everything, is the outbreak of exploits against the recent Citrix ADC vulnerability. Also known as CVE 2019-19781. The first exploit was published on Friday, at least the late Friday. My time may have been Saturday for some people in Asia and just around midnight UTC. The first exploit by Project Zero India was a simple shell script, essentially just uh, three different uh, curl commands. The first one would upload the file using the directory traversal file upload vulnerability. Second one would execute the content of the file and the third one would retrieve uh, the response from the command. Now, shortly thereafter, TrustedSec uh, did publish their version of the exploit, uh, quite a bit more professional and uh, nicer done. It actually runs sort of Python code on the net on the Citrix system and then establishes a reverse shell. And since then we have literally dozens of different exploits that people published, but pretty much all of them are sort of variations of uh, these two themes. And of course, shortly after these exploits were published, uh, the requests against our honeypots sort of went through the roof. And we have sort of identified a number of different uh, payloads that people used using these exploits. Most of the exploits sort of follow that Project Zero India scheme, but it just use simple curl commands. But we also see some that sort of use these more encoded Python scripts just like what TrustedSec did. Now, the vast majority of uh, these exploit attempts are essentially just checking if the system is vulnerable. So they're trying to run commands like uname, id, ls, and the like. And they essentially just uh, try to figure out, uh, do they get the expected response back? There are some that try to retrieve the Netscaler uh, configuration file. Now, uh, this was also possible without really much of an exploit. Uh, and then finally, we also have a tad more sophisticated exploits that install backdoors and that install crypto coin miners on these systems. So none of these exploit attempts are really sort of a big surprise. It's standard stuff that you see against all kinds of different web application vulnerabilities. At the time you're listening to this, you should assume that any Citrix device that you have in your network and that is publicly reachable has been scanned. Now, to check if you got exploited, the first thing you should look for is these XML files and uh, read our blog posts that you'll find the exact locations where you should check. That's your first quick check, but don't feel yourself uh, safe if you don't see these XML files. There are a number of exploits now also that remove all of these files from these respective directories. So they will remove not just the files that they create, they will remove files from other exploits as well. So if you don't see the XML files, next thing to check, check your cron tab uh, for any odd entries. All the exploits I've seen so far, like in particular backdoors and the CryptoCon miners will add cron tab entries. So that's another thing to look for. Now, the real tricky thing is what should you do once you do recognize that your system was vulnerable and was exploited? The problem with this is, yes, you can remove these cron tab entries and such, but you don't know what else happened. So the typical caveat in incident response, if you do find the system is exploited, don't assume it was only exploited once. There may be more sophisticated attackers that have figured out how to get their system, expect things like ransomware and such, and expect attacks from the compromised system to the rest of your network. That's part that we sort of by design don't really see in our honeypots. Our honeypots just emulate. 
these Citrix devices, we don't expose actual Citrix devices, so we don't sort of see these later stages of the attack. But at this point, you definitely should assume that a vulnerable device has been compromised. The Citrix workaround is effective against any of the attacks that we have seen so far. Now, where do you go from here? TrustedSec also released a vulnerability scanner. So you can use that scanner to find vulnerable systems in your network and Citrix updated their security advisory that they will publish uh, patches for version 11 and 12 on January 20th for version 12.1 and 13 on January 27th. And lastly, for version 10.5, on January 31st. So be ready for this, apply the patch once it comes out. But at this point, the workaround, yes, I have sometimes called it a patch, but it's really just sort of a workaround that they released is effective in blocking all the attacks that we have seen. We're working on a diary for Monday morning that will list various indicators of compromise and uh, some of the code samples and such that we have seen uh, being uh, pushed. I also prepared a brief video with a little walkthrough about what's the actual nature of the vulnerability. Uh, one thing I still see a lot is that people are blocking URLs with dot dot in them. This is not effective. What you have to block is URLs with a VPNs. That's really the critical string here. Dot dot is not necessary. The trusted sec uh, exploit, for example, doesn't use it. The Indian one does use it, but uh, really it would work without it as well. The critical parameter here that's being exploited is actually not so much the URL, it's a header. There is a header NSC underscore user that value, the value being passed that header is the one that's then used uh, to point to the file that's being created. And uh, if you watch uh, the video I created, there is a little bit more detail on how it exactly works. So uh, be careful, uh, don't just block URLs with dot dot in them. Well, and that's it for today. I will uh, publish various uh, links in the show notes to, for example, the trusted sec scanner and some of the blog posts we wrote and also to the updated advisory from Citrix. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.